Welcome to Project Hardway. Come here, check this out. This beautiful specimen is a 1986 Nissan 300ZX, and it only has 62,000 miles on it. And in this video, I'll be replacing the heater core, which is gonna require me to take that immaculate dashboard out of the car. I'm scared. I am. Let's start off by saying no, this is not my car. The guy at work has gotten this car in the last year and has uh, asked me to take care of the heater core on it and I'll take a look at a couple other things while I'm in here and at it. But this car is just absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, it's got 62,000 miles on it. Everything inside is completely all original. It's got the digital dash. It's got the tape player with tapes everywhere. Look, Chicago electronic everything it's got this air inflator lumbar support listen i mean this car is something else it's got the t-tops it's still got the original cargo cover in the rear all the carpet the floor mats the stock leather seats with the 300 zx embroidered in the back i mean it's just something else let me get you in here and take a look at what we got going on inside this thing so check it out that's the Stock dash all lit up. Isn't that cool? So retro, so 80s. In 1986, it's got the steering wheel radio controls, the cruise control. Check it out. The steering wheel volume control, it's a little rolly knob. That's so cool. Miles per gallon thingy. I don't know what that is. Acceleration, huh? I don't know. I haven't driven it. Compass, that sweet 80s tape player. Uh oh! Yeah, it's an automatic. That's okay. He keeps it clean though. The T tops, that nice, beautiful. I mean, this car is like a time capsule. It is so well taken care of. Look, it's a two plus two, so we got a back seat cargo cover little matchbox car there I mean this thing is just clean and now you can see why I say I'm scared of it look it's even got the original keys Nissan Nissan so I'll be working on this in my spare time so a little bit out of time bits and pieces here you guys will probably see every t-shirt in my collection but at the end of the day, this has got to come out. <sighs> I guess we got to get started tomorrow. My daughter's got gymnastics in a little bit. All right, so after having the car running for a bit, getting it up to temperature. Oh, let's see if we can see this on the camera there. That little slot right there. Oh, yep. Coolant leak confirmed. While I was down here, I found tire gauge. And, ooh, what's that? What's the date on that say? Oh, October 23, huh? Mechanics like snacks. Good too. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this steering wheel, get it out of the way, because I don't wanna have to fight the dash over it. And then once this is off, we'll start getting into the kick panels, and these side panels below the console here. 
Um, the horn button, just a quick pop it off. It's got four clips here, probably kind of from the top. I started at the top. I wish I'd had the camera on when I did it because my reaction when it first came loose, it's like, ah! Now this car does have the steering wheel controls for the radio and cruise control. I see some plugs behind them and uh, those go to these things. But as for the final disassembly of those plugs, I don't know if that's it. It doesn't look like they feed through the steering wheel. So there's gotta be something back here behind it. So for the time being, I'm gonna bust this nut off of here and then get the steering wheel off. The nut on the steering wheel is a 19 millimeter. I'm going to hold the steering wheel in place while I try to break it loose. Nah, there we go. Kind of iffy about setting my tools down in this car. I don't want to get anything dirty or messed up. A couple of different things. One, a lot of times people just pull on these wheels and they can get them off. I have never really been too successful at doing that. I might have done that in my 240, but everything else I tend to use a steering wheel puller. Two, I want to make sure that when I put this thing back on, that it goes back on in the exact orientation I took it off. So I'm going to get a paint marker and mark the stud and the steering wheel. I'll show you after I get that done. Be careful not to touch anything in here with it. Boop. So I got a good angle on it. Dropped a drop right there. So when I line those two things back up, when I put the steering wheel back on, I know that we're not gonna have any alignment issues. Let's see if I can pull it off. The only thing that scares me about this is bending the wheel. Oh no, okay, I think, oh yeah. All right, so this car has also got the tilt column. I can feel that shifting a little bit. I'm gonna go find my steering wheel puller. Looked all over for this doggone thing. It's in the floorboard of my Camaro. Anywho, it's pretty simple. It's got a little shaft here. It's got this thing you put on there so you're not twisting anything and gallon up the metal that's on your steering column. You got two holes on the middle there. You're going to find your bolts that fit inside those. In this case, it's the fine thread ones. Center it up. Get it down in there. Sound the horn a couple of times. Sound the horn a couple more times. Consider disconnecting the battery. Come on, get in there. Make sure you've got these bolts even so that you are pulling the steering wheel evenly, not crooked or sideways, anything like that. Start to tighten up that bolt in the middle so that it pushes the thing here, thing here, out up against the washers. Once that's tight, you go find the right size socket. And the winner is 5 8 Let's just start slowly applying pressure. And it'll start slowly pulling that steering wheel off there. Oh, that's my nail. Did that get it? Oh, yeah. That's all it took. <laughs> all right, I get it. So we got back here. All right. So back here behind it, we got a main harness that plugs everything in. Oh boy. So after a quick bit of research, I found that the harness for this plug here is off inside the steering column cover, which means it's time to take that off. Jeez. Oh, Takes four screws on the bottom, two right here, two on the sides. Take this top cover off. And then this doesn't look like it actually detaches as it looks like it has a ring on the back that keeps it on the column. But you do this and you should have enough room to get the wire harness over to the side. And the plug is right up here. And that plug is out. No two ways about it. That plug is a bit of a pain because it plugs in like this and it's in a spot about that big. But steering wheel, out. What am I gonna do with all these parts? So I decided to put some of these parts away back here in the cargo area for safekeeping. Here's that little matchbox car again. A cargo cover. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. It's got the carpet. It's got the bags for the T-tops. But look, she's been given some awards. Beautiful car. Well, now that we broke the seal on this thing, time to start getting into some other stuff. Down here, we're going to take this kick panel out in the lower driver cover. The screw here. One here. Up in you know here pull the panel back and that panel's out 
keep the hardware together. Now this lower driver panel, screw here. Hopefully all this hardware is consistent. What I hate is when I get into some of these cars, like GM's real bad about it, they'll have like 17 different screws down here. And then you go to put it all back together. If you know it's been apart for three months, you can't remember which screws go where and you get them wrong. And that's if you can even find them. Ooh, what ails you, my child? Oh wait, there we go. All right, there's that. And then work it down over that lever. We've got bulb here for the lower driver lamp. Pop that bulb out. Boom. All right. Next. Uh, these vents up here. These have to come out. There's a big screw here. Over here. And then that vent will pull right out. Then you've got a sensor here, I believe, for the automatic climate control. 1986 Nissan automatic climate control there's that for this one yeah there we go yeah that one just falls right out too uh yeah and that one too has an art has a harness on it in this case i'm going to put that screw back where i found it sometimes it's just a better thing to do so i'll go over to the other side similar process to what i just did over there get that lower driver panel out probably get that panel below the glove box out and the glove box itself all right, so now the glove box is ready to come out. There's another one of those cookies. There are two bolts for the latch up top or for the striker. And then there's four screws around the edge. Something you can do here real quick. Oh, got them sliding out of the car. All right, if you gently push in the sides, these tabs will come out. There's one on the other side too. This tab will come out and that'll allow the glove box door to swing down all the way to give you access to the screws a little bit easier. This also has an adverse reaction and dumping all the contents of the glove box into the floorboard. Make sure you pick up after yourself. Then one, two, three, four, and these guys here, glove box come out. Screws are out and just pull it down out of there. Now there is a light here. Take that bad boy out. And then there's a switch attached to the latch mechanism. Um, you have to unplug that. Another, there we go, glove box is out. While I'm down here, I might as well take off these harnesses for the dash wiring. Wiggle that second one out of there. And this car has got the digital dash. So there are three to unplug here. Come on, you. There we go. Those harnesses are now free. And from what I understand, this goes to the EC uterus. So no need to mess with that. We'll leave it there. All right, coming back up top here. I guess I probably could have started here, but you know, do what you want to do. I need to take this radio out. Also, there's a couple of harnesses down here on this side as well that have to come out. Before I go any further, you can do this without taking off the steering wheel. The reason I chose to is because look at this thing. The less I have to wrestle with things, the better I'm going to feel about the job I'm going to do because I don't want to be responsible for the destruction of this dashboard. Moving forward. How the hell am I going to get that off without destroying it? Okay, two screws right there. Get a screwdriver. Look, pull that back. Get that out of your way. You always got to be careful with this radio stuff. You just go prying and popping, this stuff will break. Pull that ashtray out. Now, how does that come out of there? Hmm. Oh, like that. There we go. There's that. Aha! There were some screws hiding in there on me. See? See why, why you don't just go pulling? Probably should have taken this console out. Uh, we're here now. There we go. There we go. All right. Plug for the cigarette lighter off there. So we get this plug for the cigarette lighter off there. Hey, it screws onto the back. A couple little light harnesses here. That's a whole lot of harness for such a little light. Oh, there we go. There's that. Let's see, we got a screw up top here. Oh, that one was loose. A couple of screws up top, a couple of screws down bottom. 
I believe that should get her out of there. Oh yeah, we got some movement. Uh, that is a unit. Oh, got to be careful. These little tabs that hold it in there, when I pulled it out, tried to run up under the material on the dash. So I'm going to pry it forward a little bit. And then pull it out. Golly. This thing weighs more than my children when they were born. Ugh, please don't scratch anything. A little harness there. Yeah. I said, get out of there. A little harness there, a harness there. And God, this thing has got like half the wiring in the car goes to this radio. Oh, another harness there. Boom. Another one. Boom. Where's that one go? Where'd that one go? That's the light bulb, isn't it? Yep. The antenna wire. Boom. There's that. One more little harness here. Oh, wait. Nope. We're still going. Oh, my word. This thing is unbelievable. Look, after all those harnesses that I just took off the outside, it's got this huge pigtail that goes to two more harnesses inside. Incredible. Might not be half the wiring to the car. Might be three quarters of it. I think this radio's got more wiring in it than the entirety of my Camaro. Which you can watch the buildup of the big block Chevrolet in that thing with a four speed transmission. Just go back through the other videos on the channel. And while you're here, Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you see me do more stuff like this. All right, that is one radio pulled out. Now there are four screws in here that help hold the dash. And then there are two nuts in here, a bolt down here, two nuts over here, a bolt down here, and four screws across the top that uh, hold the dashboard in. I think I'm gonna wait till tomorrow for that because I've got to spend time with my family. We'll pick that up then. All right, so it's time to take this beautiful dashboard out of the car. I'm gonna start with these four screws here. Then I'll move on to the four 12 millimeter bolts that hold in the bottom of the dash. Two on this side, two on that side, and another one down here. And then we get to do the scary part. It's taking that defrost vent out to get to the five that go across the front. All right, going in to take these defrost vents out, I notice on this side, going to just pry up a little bit. Oh, wait, hold on. It's, it's not seated. Huh, okay, that's fine. Looks like there's a harness there. Is this thing got the auto lights? There's an optic sensor there for something is what I'm saying. Maybe for the auto climate control carefully pull that out yeah there we go undo those plugs and get that out of the way all right i'm gonna let you guys watch me hopefully not destroy this vent from out there there are three clips that hold it in here here and here i'm gonna take uh my finessing stick pry it in under there right there at the clips and hopefully just pop the clip up with no other issues yeah let's try this okay so I tried just prying up on this vent with a finessing stick. You see that clip in there. And I tried prying up on the vent and it wasn't coming up. So I had another idea. Looking at that clip, looks like it's got a little tab there. I can push that back with this uh, pry bar for opening paint can. So I'm gonna leave that one in there, holding that open just a tick, then slide over and do the same thing over here. Now that I've got a little bit more gap in this area, that I can pop that other tab up. Well, we might be onto something. Oh, something's happening. Come on now, get out of there. Now I gotta clean the windshield. Oh, that is a deep vent. That center tab did try to snag up on the edge of the dash a little bit, but I was able to pop it loose without doing any damage. So we've now reached the most critical point in disassembling the dash, and that's taking it out. 
unless you've taken the dash out of your car or one like the car you're working on before, you don't know what's back there, all right? When you start to pull this thing off, there may still be stuff attached to the back. A lot of times you got a speedometer cable. There may be wiring harnesses that run straight from the chassis to the AC controls or to something on the combi meter up there. So take your time and be careful. We'll pull this shifter back. We'll pull the bottom out a little bit. Start to pull the top out and you see it starts to roll forward on me. I'm probably gonna need to be over there because there might be some stuff over here. Point is, take your time, be patient. If something starts to hang or snag, stop, find it. Having somebody help you would probably be good too. But not today, huh? Sterum Kong cover is making me nervous. Now the turn signal and windshield wiper stocks are making me nervous. Yep, making me nervous. Man, getting that thing off is finicky. I did figure out that this just snaps onto the bottom side of the steering column there, so I just boop. But there's four screws in here that hold these switches into this block and this cam gear for the turn signal cancel switch, uh, screw on a clamp back here that clamps this to here, but then you got this big old zip tie that holds the harness to a part back here, making it harder to get this stuff out, and then the, the harness, you know, there's a plug down off in there somewhere that, you know, I haven't fished out. Oh wait, that might be it, but I've got it down out of the way at least, and if I want to, after I get the dash out, go back and remove that harness so these guys aren't just dangling here. But now that that stuff is out of my way, oh gosh, this thing is, why is this so heavy? Oh gosh, I'm gonna put something over this center console. I don't wanna scratch it. Look, it's about all I got right now, okay? Well, this side's not having any issues. This over here, something is somewhere doing something. crawl under there and take a look. Oh, I didn't unplug these harnesses down here. That's what that is. Now let's see what else is gonna hold us up. Oh gosh, nothing, it's coming. Oh, I feel like, oh wait, need to open that door. Oh, easy. Oh my God, this thing is pristine. Oh, this thing was pristine. No, I'm kidding, it still is. Holy cow. And there's something back there. Y'all see anything? Nope. I think she's coming right out. Now something's holding up right here. Got a harness. Uh. Oh golly, holy cow. Oh, no, oh, um. oh. It's a boy. Oh my God. Oh my God, be gentle. Here, I need you guys to step over. Oh gosh, no, oh. <laughs> why didn't I do this this way? Oh, golly, oh, idiot. Here, you guys get back a little bit. I'm probably just gonna fall out of the car. Ow. that anyway easy oh. oh oh yeah oh it's out there it is no dash all right now that we've got the dashboard out it's time to get that dash bar out stretches across the front there check out my shirt Oh, yeah. Anyway, a quick overview on it. Looks like we've got a bolt here to take out. Take off this bracket for the hood release lever. 
Looks like I'm gonna have to drop the steering column. Even though I've got the wheel off, still gotta drop the steering column. There's gonna be a bolt here, one on the opposite side there, and then back here in the back, there are two more right there, those two guys. Take off these side brackets. Once the column's dropped, there's two more bolts that hold the bar in. Once the column's out of the way here and here, that way, that way. On this side, it's fairly cut and dry. It got three bolts right here. One here, one in the middle, one on the back side. Then this bracket here. Golly, there's no light. The same bracket that's on the other side here. Get that loose and then the bar comes out. I'll let you guys check in with me real quick on getting this dash bar out. I was actually able to get the bar loose here without having to drop the column all the way down. I took these front two bolts out and I just loosened up the two back there. That gave me enough wiggle room that I could get a wrench up in there and get those bolts out. Something I overlooked over here, I've got to drop this harness down out of the way, just a couple of quick screws. And there's three bolts on this side, just like there is on the other side. And I've also got to get this vent out. Two screws up here, and then there's a screw back here that puts those two pieces of vent together. Pop that apart, get those out of the way, and then this side of the dash bar will be able to come free once all the other hardware is out. All right, got the dash bar out. Now we're ready to start moving on to the vents. We'll start with this center vent section here. Looks like there's a couple of screws down here in the bottom that have to come out. Then up here for the top section, there's one here, one here, hard to see, but one there, one there. And of course the wire harness for the sensors for the automatic climate control. I'm gonna dig around into it, but you, you don't always see everything when you're first looking at it. Be patient with this stuff. Don't try to force anything. Take the screws out, try to gently remove it. And if something holds up, wiggle it around a little bit, feel for it. Try to get something out of there. If something feels like it's gonna break, it just might. So just stop, look at it some more, get a flashlight. Now we are just about ready to take the heater box assembly out, except we're not. We still have to disconnect the heater hoses from the firewall here, which means that this heater petcock assembly has to come off and out, which also means that coolant's gonna spill all over the place. And given this pristine automobile, look at this thing. This hasn't been detailed. This has just been taken care of. I'd rather not spill coolant all down the back of the engine and all over my shop floor. So I've got the car up on ramps. I'm gonna climb under here, drain the coolant. I shouldn't have to do a full coolant system drain, just enough to get it down to where it'll minimize the amount that gets spilled when we go taking stuff apart on the firewall. All right, down here under the car, see that condenser for the air conditioner, the radiator, all that stuff sits in an angle under this car so it can all squeeze in there and make the nose real small. The drain cock that for the radiator is right there, right there. Just pop a good size flathead screwdriver in there and it should pop and come out and then start draining. Oh, there went the uh, drain plug. All right, we got that draining. While that's working out, I'm gonna start taking apart some of this stuff here on this pet cock. <laughs> pop off this vacuum line. You guys remember that one, where that one went so that I can't. And we got, oh, that one broke. Ah, it's unfortunate. Pop this harness apart. So now you start getting stuff that has been heat cycled under the hood here, but never taken apart. Here, you go over there. Don't go too far though. Let's see if we'll start making a mess here. I got a love-hate deal with these little hose clamps that Nissan use. And most of the time you gotta take them all the way apart to get them off without damaging anything. But they are pretty easy to use and convenient. Easy girl. Try not to break anything. Here, pay attention to where I put this vacuum line too. I don't wanna lose that. We'll bust out one of my little shorties here for that tight spot. This stuff makes me nervous. I don't want to break any of this stuff. This stuff is old, all right? That's all original. You got to be careful, patient. Nope. Yep. Ah, there we go. There's that one. 
And that one, let's see, get that out of the way here. Give me that clamp. Here, I'm gonna hold on to this one too. Now we can see the access to the heater hoses there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the drain plug back in the radiator because I think we've got all the coolant out of it that we need to get out of it. Don't need to drain anymore. Okay, back inside, had to go ahead and remove the rest of this bracket off of this side. There was one more air duct that ran across here. And of course, with keeping true to the integrity of reassembly, I've been putting screws back in the holes that come out of. But you see back here, there's a screw there that's gonna hold the bottom part of the air box in. There's also a bracket that goes right here. You gotta take off, acts as a coupler and a seal between these two items. There'll be two screws right here for the bottom on top of the trans tunnel. And another screw back here. And see where that gets me. All right, now that I have most of the hardware out that I'm aware of, it has to come out at least. Now I've got to figure out how to finagle this thing out of here. Let's see, we got a bracket here. Oh, wait. Okay, nothing fell, it's just this washer. Easy now, easy. Easy does it. Oh, wait, oh, we're getting somewhere. It's moving some more. Come on, girl. Oh, so much stuff. Let's stick my hand in here, see. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 here she comes. Oh, e easy, easy now. Oh, oh, it's free. There we go. This lip right here goes in behind the back side of this part of the air box. So over here, what I was seeing that was holding me up was this little guy right here. Screws on with two Phillips head screws right there. It's where all these vacuum lines and harnesses run through. So got that loose and I'll work to disconnect what I have to on that. That way I can get it out of the car. There we are, we've got the heater box out of the car. That little vacuum module on the side. Holy cow, take a picture of that thing. You got one, two, three, four, five vacuum lines and a harness. And all those vacuum lines control the vent doors. So if you don't hook the right hose back up to the right one, you're gonna have vents doing the wrong things. Now, the heater core is inside here. Gotta take this apart to get that out of there and Along the way, we might find out where it's leaking at. First things first, I'm going to take these two screws off here. Yeah, there you go. Then these two screws right here look like they strap that core into the air box. One there. There we go. Well, yep, and it just slides out. And like I said, it, and it just slides out. No, wait, we got a harness hanging up here. Get out of there, you. Oh yeah, there we go. Here, core coming out. All right, I've got some things going on here. Before I go any further, I wanna get you guys up to speed on what I'm doing. This is our replacement heater core. And while it is an improvement over the factory, because instead of having these plastic end tanks, which are what's leaking here, it's all metal. Problem is though, is that this isn't the exact same shape. Those plastic intakes are molded in a, in a way that when you put the heater core in, it holds it in place and it seals this area up. But I think I may have found a solution. So I've started dissecting the original heater core here. I've already taken a screwdriver and pried off the intake here sorry it sounds like i'm saying intake when i'm trying to say in tank because i'm sick okay so the only thing that i'm going to be able to use from that old heater core will be the plastic in tank that i already took off i've put that back off in here where it would have sat with the original core what that's going to do is make things a little bit tighter back there so the end of this end of the thing doesn't move around too much um, what I've done is I've bought some foam tape, sticky back foam tape, weather strip type stuff. 
but this is a high heat, high density, nice, good deal. I've wiped off the outside of this with acetone. Now going to put down some of this stuff on here. And I'm gonna do it on the sides too because the factory airbox had a seal going down the side of this. And what I'm gonna do is just try to create something that will help this stay in place, not rattle around, not let air flow around it and direct the air where it needs to go inside the airbox. Make sure I get a good press on that, those grooves, you know, Stickers don't like sticking to not flat things. So you gotta put some pressure on it, work it down into grooves and things like that whenever you're doing this type of work. Now, before I go any further, I'll go ahead and test fit this and see if you have any trouble trying to squeeze it into the air box there. Ooh, yeah, that seal is thick. Give it a little squish. Tape is thick, but if I'm patient with it, don't tear it up. Once it's in there, it's gonna give me a good firm seal around the edges of the heater core. Now that's exactly what I needed. Now left, what's left is this outside edge here. So I'm gonna have to actually take this up and out a little bit again, hopefully without messing up that fresh seal so that I can seal the top and the bottom off and then work it back in there. Okay. Put it right smack on the heater core there. Have a little bit of excess to wrap around so I can seal up to the edges of this seal. Do the same thing up here on top. Give it a good squish into those fins. Give it as much of a chance to adhere to things as possibly can. Now I may have to break out the old finesse stick and work this in there but that will make sure we're sealed up tight. Just gonna carefully work these edges in. All right, so on the bottom, I've still got a bit of a gap, so I'm gonna double it up and put another layer of foam tape on this bottom section here. Ooh, now that is definitely gonna be squished in there once I get it down. This needs to be sealed up so you don't get a bunch of airflow coming out of here where it doesn't need to go instead of through the air ducts where it does need to go. There we go. Heater cores in there and it is all sealed up. Awesome. Just throw all this stuff back together like it was and then I'll throw it back in the car. Do you remember how all those vacuum lines went? Because I don't. All right, there we go. We've got the heater tubes back on the heater core. When I was putting those on, I looked up and I realized I was going to have to double up a layer on that top gap as well. So I popped it back out real quick, took care of that. Now this thing is ready to get back in the car. All right, we're going back in with the heater box. Like I said with that vacuum diagram, take good pictures or don't unhook all those vacuum lines and do what you can to unhook it so that those stay plugged in and this block down here, you can get all that stuff out without doing all that. Cause even if you take good pictures, it's a rat's nest back there. Any hoose, we'll work this thing back in here. Pass all this wiring and junk. Gotta get the back edge of this box and behind the back edge of this box and get those heater hose tubes to stick through the firewall. Might be a little finicky. Now that the car's up on ramps, I just wanna fall back in the seat. Oof, might be a lot of finicky. All right, so after sitting in the passenger seat and working from this side, a little bit of push and wiggle and jiggle and shove and left and right and up and down. Got that back into place. Just gotta wiggle it around a little bit for some final alignment. And it pushed the seal out on the firewall there. So I'll have to slide that back in place too. All right, air box is in. Fence are in, dash bar is in. Steering column is secure back up to the dash bar. I think I've got most everything ready to go to put the dash back in. There might be a couple of things on here that I could put on before I put the dash in, but I'm not going to. We'll put the dash in and then I'll struggle to plug the rest of this stuff up and get it all buttoned up. So the dashboard is upstairs resting on the couch above the garage. I'm going to go up there, get it, and uh, see if I can struggle less to put it in as I did to get it out. If your car's got one of those sun sensors, make sure you put the wires up there kind of in the vent. 
Don't want to get those trapped under the dash. Oh boy. Here we go. Easy. Guess I'm gonna sit down with it. Uh. Oh boy. Easy girl. Uh. Uh. Let's see what we got here. Oh, there's that stuff. Okay. Easy does it. Oh, we're almost there. Gentle. Easy. You know, in manufacturing, when you've got one of these fully assembled like this, they refer to it as a cockpit module. Now you know. Now kind of working in reverse order from how I took it apart. I'll go back, kind of make sure that everything's in position. Look down at these holes. Make sure that the holes that the bolts go through line up with the brackets that are on the firewall here. And make sure that I get my harness pulled through there. And also remember that this long bolt goes right here. All the other ones are short. For some reason, this long bolt goes right here. Well, I've got the driver's side defrost fit back in. That was a quick slide in, slip the clip. This one's got eight of those clips on it. And if you recall, it didn't seat in there like it should. It was just set in there. So once I get this harness tucked back in the dash, we'll flip it over and I'll set this in place and then I'll push in on those little clips, kind of like we had to push out on them on that side to get it out and see if we'll get them to snip back into place. That was a little bit of a chore to get that uh, harness tucked in there, but it's there. So, bent in. Come on, ah, there, there we go, there we go. There's a little clip. There's another one. There's eight of those doggone things. So, there's a little snip snap in there. It looks like we got it. Now that I've got the top of the dash secured, I'm going to start with the easy side on the passenger side. Put that bottom screw in that secures the dash there. Put the glove box in, plug these harnesses up, and then move my way over that way. Well, I've been grinding away on this old girl, but finally the dash is back in it. Everything's buttoned up. No major issues or concerns to report. Now, throw those heater hoses back on, fill it up with coolant. Give it a quick bath and this thing is out of here. All right, heater bypass valve is back on the engine. Heater hoses are on, everything's tight. Just topping off the cooling system here. If you don't have one of these things, get one. They're not, you know, they're not exactly cheap. They're pretty expensive if you go to the parts store, but Harbor Freight sells them at a pretty good deal. So get you one of these. Got the car up in the air. Right now, this is the highest point in the cooling system. You don't have to put the car in the air, but it helps. I filled up the cup. It stopped bubbling. It's sitting there. Now we're ready to start the engine. I'm going to turn the heater on full blast so the heater core is open. I'm going to let it sit here and run, get up to operating temperature. Once the thermostat opens and everything starts flowing through like it should, we'll start seeing air bubbles come out. And once we stop seeing air bubbles come out, we know that we've got all the air out of the cooling system. See right away it's gurning and churning in there. Right, so as it warms up, it's been sucked all down in there out of the cup, so we'll top it off. Now I'm gonna go inside and make sure that nothing's coming out of the heater box. And I'll also check those heater hoses, make sure nothing's leaking anywhere that we've undone things. It's been running for several minutes, it's starting to get up to temperature. It's flowing cooling through the system. I haven't really seen any air bubbles come out, so now I'm gonna shut the engine off, let it sit. See if it sucks any more of that in, and we'll close that off and put the radiator cap back on. Well, that does it for this video. This 300ZX turned out really well, and I'm glad to have done a favor for the owner. And the couple of coins I make off of it are going to go right back into something else I've got planned coming up on the channel. In the meantime, we got to get back into Virginia. It's well past time to have that car out and doing things like, I don't know, driving it on the street, going to the drag strip, maybe having body panels on it. So we're going to get to that real soon. Remember guys, sometimes you got to do things the hard way.